everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. I hope you guys are having a very Merry Christmas. This is obviously the day after Christmas, but I hope you guys did enjoy your holidays yesterday, enjoying time with your family and all of that. I know I did. I had an amazing Christmas time, and we are still probably celebrating the next couple of days or so. So, you know what? Uh, it is what it is, man. Love Christmas time. Love hanging out with my family. Love my beautiful and amazing wife, and it was just an amazing Christmas, man. Just excellent stuff. If you missed the Christmas haul from yesterday, definitely go check that out. But if you guys missed the video from a couple days ago, we did the top 10 WWE Elite Action Figures of 2019. We counted it down from 10, and I let you guys know all of my favorite top action figures from all of the WWE Elite Action Figures from Mattel that we got this year, and uh, today we're going to do the opposite, you know? We, we did the good side. Now we're going to take a look at the side that I really don't want to take a look at, but I figured it would make for a pretty good video idea. We are going to do the top 10 worst WWE Elite Action Figures of the year. I have a countdown of 10 and I did take a very long time to make this list. It took a very long time to compile because Mattel does such an amazing job. I love Mattel. I love the WWE Elite figures that we get. They're so amazing and most of them, uh, if not, you know, 90% of them are always pretty fantastic. There is a couple hiccups here and there along the road, but you know, it, it, you can't get it right every single time. And it was actually very nitpicky and hard to make this list, so uh, we're just going to give it our best effort. I do have 10 figures here for the top 10 worst WWE WWE Elite Figures of the Year. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and shut the hell up and get into my top 10 worst WWE Elite Figures of the Year. So coming in at number 10, guys, probably going to be pretty controversial if you want me to say so because uh, it's pretty difficult and a lot of people probably are not going to agree with this, but I'm going with the Elite Series 70 Finn Balor. Now, I know what everyone is thinking. Everybody's probably thinking, are you are you insane, Brad? Are you stupid? And uh, the just give me a second to explain before you guys just destroy me. Okay, first of all, the hat was the wrong color. Okay, the cloth jacket is beautiful. It's nice. I'm not going to deduct points for that. And the, uh, you know, the paint right here on the back is fantastic. You know, all the paint detail they put into this figure is great. Well, you're probably like, well, Brad, uh, if all that is so great, why did you put it on the list? Well, the, uh, first of all, the red on this figure is too dark. I don't, I'm not big on the red color. And also, I don't really care for this head sculpt. And if you guys are looking at this figure, you're probably thinking it doesn't look that bad or whatever. But it's something about, like, the hair. And then I actually repainted this face on WWE Action Figure Surgery. So it looks a lot better than it did initially. And maybe I can pull up a picture to show you guys exactly what it looked like before I painted it. But also, I just am not a big fan of the head sculpt. I don't know what it is. I just do not like it that much. And uh, it was a big disappointment for me this year, which is why I put it at number 10. Because it's such a good figure after the fact. If you don't look at those things about the figure, it is a really good figure. So I did have to nitpick a little bit as far as the color. It was just mainly that it was so disappointing for me. You know, coming into the year, you know, I made multiple videos talking about if they made this video... Uh, if they made this figure without the ripped up torso and all that, I would have been devastated and all that. And then we finally get the figure. It had the ripped torso. It was super hyped. And then the red color and the face and everything, I was just like, eh. But it's such a beautiful figure, though. I will say the back paint and all of that stuff going on. And I'm a huge Finn Balor fan, so it is a great figure. But uh, it was a disappointment for me this year. So I did want to put it on this top 10. But that's why it's at number 10, because it's still a badass figure at the, if you look at the grand scheme. Coming in at number 9, guys, we have a WrestleMania 36 Elite, and it is the WrestleMania 36 Kofi Kingston. Now, another figure that was difficult because uh, I love this figure as far as the attire goes. I love the pink sleeves. I like the torso and everything. I think the only reason this is on here is the head sculpt. I think this is the exact head sculpt that we got with the Toys R Us 3-pack all those years ago, but you guys can see by the, uh, the head shape and the sculpt here, they made it where his hairline is way too receding, and I added that fade in there. That is not their work that is my work to where I added the fade that way it wouldn't look so bad it would look a hundred times better and it looks a hundred times better with that fade in there than uh, you know not being there at all it's like bald and then just instant dreads and that is the reason this figure is on the list because I really actually like this figure a lot and it's actually really fun to pose around and stuff that's why it's at number nine but I did have to put this on here due to the head skull but it is a good solid figure and that's why it's pretty high on the top 10 worst of the year but that hairline was not good 
at number eight, guys, we have another WrestleMania 36 figure, and it is the Mick Foley. Now, this is the figure right here, but I did head swap it with my Cactus Jack. So this is the head sculpt that came on this WrestleMania figure. And while I like this figure a lot, again, this head sculpt is not good. Like, look at this head sculpt right here. I know they were trying to go for this head sculpt right here, but it just does not look like Mick Foley to me. I think this head sculpt looks a lot better for Mick Foley. This one right here is just, woo, buddy. Literally, the head sculpt is the only reason this figure is on the list. I think that uh, the rest of the figure is pretty freaking fantastic, if you want me to say so. I think it feels good in the hand. You get the shooter hands right here. But this head sculpt on that figure just wasn't doing it for me. I just don't see Cactus Jack or Mick Foley in this head sculpt. And so that is why this uh, Cactus Jack slash Mick Foley figure did come in at number eight. Later on in the list, you guys will start to see, you know, why uh, I put the worst on here. But uh, these first few are mainly head sculpts and little, uh, little things. Number seven, guys, we do have an Elite 70 figure, and it is the Elite 70 Seth Rollins. And this Elite 70 Seth Rollins is on here because they gave us the same head sculpt from six series earlier. They also gave us the lighter skin tone instead of the regular Seth Rollins tone. I don't know if I have a Rollins figure right beside me, but if you guys know what I'm talking about, this figure is his old Elite 25 skin tone, and then later on they changed it to a darker skin tone. So this figure is pretty odd because this head sculpt is the same head sculpt we saw from Elite 60. So six series later, they gave us the exact same head sculpt. They gave us the lighter skin tone. I think a few things about this figure are very inaccurate. I think it was his vest, I think, or something was inaccurate or something wasn't right about it. They had the shield logo on the vest. And uh, overall, I'm just not a big fan of the shield figures. I just don't think they pose very well and everything. So given all that, combined with the reused head sculpt, the lighter skin tone that wasn't needed, and a couple other things, I figured that this shield Seth Rollins could go on the list. And that is why it comes in at number seven. Coming in at number six, guys, we actually have another Seth Rollins figure, and it is the Top Talents 2019 figure, and this is not how the figure looks originally, okay? Again, they gave us a reused uh, head sculpt. The Top Talents 2019 Elite did come with this head sculpt, which we saw on the 2017 SummerSlam Elite, or the 2018 SummerSlam Elite, I can't remember. Regardless, they reused the same exact head sculpt. They all, We also saw this head with the Elite 57 set that just didn't have the true effects on it. It also did not not include his entrance vest and it is a re-release we have seen the elite 52 seth rollins before and that is what this is basically with the belt buckle on there i will say though i do like the belt buckle added because it is more accurate they do give us a monday night rollins shirt but uh, using that same head sculpt was pretty disappointing. No entrance vest was disappointing. And it's basically just a re-release of a figure. So it's just like, eh, why did we need this? You know what I'm saying? So it would have been cooler to get a different Rollins attire. Especially since he's worn, you know, so many different great attires at that time. I think that uh, they could have given us something else. And that's the only reason it's on this list is because it's basically a re-release. And they used a bunch of re-old stuff. No entrance vest. Here's the difference in skin tones from the Shield Rollins and the Top Talents. You guys can see that the, uh, the Shield Rollins is a a little bit lighter. This is the regular Seth Rollins skin and this is like the Daniel Bryan skin tone. Number five, guys, we do have the Build-A-Figure Danny Davis figure from the WrestleMania 36 wave. And the reason this comes in on there is because of how loose this waist is. I cannot stand that. Um, he's pretty stiffy liffy in the ab crunch, but the waist is super duper loose. It's like a freaking fidget spinner in 2016 in this hoe. I will also say that his head sculpt's pretty big. I think his head is too big for his body just slightly, so that is another reason why. I also don't necessarily think this figure was needed. I think it's pretty cool to get a referee figure. I think we are going to get a build a figure for the rest of the WrestleMania series moving forward. That is what Bill said, so that's pretty cool that we're going to get more build a figures. I'm excited to see who else we get, but uh, this figure did come in on my list just because of the fidget spinner. It is fixable, but um, that is not an excuse because uh, we shouldn't have to do that. You know, it should just have a tight swivel, and it could just be mine, but uh, for my personal top 10 worst figures of the year, for me, this had to come in on the list because of this super loose waist torso thing. So number five is the build a figure WrestleMania wave Danny Davis. 
at number four, guys, we have a couple figures that are the exact same figure. We are talking about the Elite 68 Braun Strowman and the Elite Top Talents 2019 Braun Strowman. And uh, the reason they come in on the list is because of, uh, well, they're just basically the same exact figure released at the exact same time in two separate waves. So basically this was, I think this was kind of an excuse just to get Braun Strowman's on the shelf, you know, that are looked pretty similar, you know. Uh, the Top Talents lines are the reason that we get, you know, the Top Talents guys, you know, the guys that sell well, the guys that they want on the shelf all the time, John Cena, stuff like that, which I think is a genius idea. I think it's excellent. I think it's a great way to sell figures because, you know, the moms go down the aisle. They look on the aisle and they go, oh my God, I know Seth Rollins. I know AJ Styles. I know Braun Strowman and they just take them and I think that's excellent. Very smart business move by Mattel. However, for the collectors, it doesn't necessarily work out that way just because, you know, we get the same exact figure which could have been used for somebody else in the Elite 68 wave, could have been used for somebody else else in the top talents wave and I just think Braun Strowman's figures they're good figures they're don't get me wrong but they're just so I guess they're just kind of boring they've been so similar over the years um you know if you take a look at all the different Braun Strowman's I know we're getting one in Elite 76 I think hopefully we get like a shirtless look or like a different type of pants or uh, like some Timberlands or something for his figure don't get me wrong it looks just like Braun Strowman and everything I'm just I think I, I know a lot of my friends at least are just kind of sick of the Braun Strowman's and uh, getting these two back to back like that re release the same exact figure with the exact same accessories you know series right beside each other it was just like oh come on bro that's uh, whatever so that is why Braun Strowman is number four number three guys we have the elite bella twins brie bella from elite 68 and nikki bella from elite 71 and the reason the bella twins come in is basically because how awesome the women's figures were after elite series 71 you know uh, we saw this nikki bella and then just after that we got becky lynch we got Kyrie Sane, we got natalia so the addition of the double jointed knees really made the rest of the women's figures of the year look pretty crappy i would say outside of probably nia Jax, um the women's figures were pretty weak sauce. And so, uh, you know, their single jointed knees are terrible. Like, look how that is a very weak. That's not even 90 degrees, so that is very weak for a knee bend. We haven't seen the Bella Twins on television in forever, and I just don't know why they were necessarily needed this year. I mean, I understand it. I know they're pretty popular. They're, I mean, everybody kind of loves them. I know that little girls and stuff like that love them. However, uh, I, I just wasn't feeling this release. I wasn't feeling these releases, and uh, they can't, they're very hard to pose around and stuff like that. If they had double jointed knees, it'd probably be a different story. Story. But for me, these came in at number three on the worst figures or the worst elites of 2019. Coming in at number two, guys, we have another elite women's figure, and we are starting off with the figure from the first wave of the year of 2019, WWE Elite Series 65, Rowdy Ronda Rousey right here with the jacket on, and this figure is terrible to me. I cannot stand it. It does not want to stand up most of the time, and the ankle is super duper loose. She only has a single jointed knee, which is pretty loose as well. Doesn't even go 90 degrees. Um, her ankles do not have their own swivel. You can't just spin her ankle the whole thigh goes so like if I hold this in place her ankle is not moving because there's no joint here super duper loose right here she always wants to lean and fall forward it's a promo attire which I'm not very big on and uh, it's just I, I don't know man this figure gets on my last nerve kind of like that basic like look at how loose that knee is right there just kind of leans back right there her legs are super duper jiggly it's just not a good figure man at least mine's not I am not a fan of this figure at all and that is why it came in at the number two spot just very limited articulation. It's kind of weird because one of my least favorite figures of the year is Ronda Rousey, and then one of my favorite figures of the year is Ronda Rousey with the Ultimate Edition. So it just shows how much better a women's figure can be if you give them the right articulation and you you know you fix them up nice. But that is my number two worst figure of the year is the Elite 65 Rowdy Ronda Rousey. And coming in at number one, ladies and gentlemen, we have a figure that I think baffled a whole lot of people. We are going with the Elite Series 72 Velveteen Dream. Now, how funny is it that I just have a pair of legs right here? Well, that's that's the first part that's funny because I was making a custom out of it. I was going to switch the torso to fix that god-awful torso, but then I ended up going with something different that you guys will see later on. But I can bring up maybe a video or a picture of the Velveteen Dream from, you know, when we reviewed it and stuff. And this figure was just... 
very baffling. You know, it used the same exact head sculpt that we saw from 6 Series earlier or 5 Series earlier with the Elite 67 Velveteen Dream. The torso mold was very, very weird. Um, first of all, he already has a weird torso with the Triple H torso because it's so weird. Like, I don't know why they make him that jacked. It really doesn't make any sense to me why they make him so big up top with the torso. On top of that, we talked about the reused head sculpt and it was an attire that we had not seen on TV before. They showed us the images of the Elite 72 Velveteen Dream and then literally like four or five days later on NXT television, he wears the attire. He didn't even wear it in a match and considering all of the great attires that Velveteen Dream has worn and they give us this one that we had never seen before, they did it very weird with the, with the sculpt on the torso and everything like that. It was just a big disappointment for everybody wanting a really cool attire for Velveteen Dream after getting his basic regular first time attire with the Elite Series 67, which we all love that figure, but this one was just not doing it. You know, this this figure got torn apart. I think uh, it, it was just not well received by the community, man. The community was not feeling this one. I was not feeling it either. That is why I put it at my number one spot. But that is pretty much my top 10 worst WWE Elites of 2019. Again, a very difficult list to make. I mean, my God, what do you do when Mattel makes so many good figures? You make a list that wasn't even that bad. I mean, what? Two or three figures on this list were bad, and I could have left some out. I, I don't know. I, I tried my best. I called myself thinking about it really hard and trying to, you know, get all the figures on there that we all did not like this year. But uh, if you guys uh, had another figure that you think belongs on this list, please let me know down in the comment section below. But uh, I had a ton of fun doing this video, even though it was very difficult to make. I still love all these figures individually. I think that, you know, they all have their parts that are pretty good. But that is going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the top 10 worst elites of the year. Please comment down below a figure that you think should have been in this video. Also, if you haven't, de definitely go check out our top 10 figures of the year where we cover the positive side of figures. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.